Hello. I'm standing in the laboratory of Sir Arthur Grebe Streebling. Streeb Grebling? Who is perhaps the world's leading authority on worms. Sir Arthur, you are a worm expert? That's rather a tricky one to start with. Could you phrase it again? Sir Arthur, are you an expert on worms? That's still an awfully difficult one to start with. Couldn't you ease me into it? Couldn't you ask me who played inside left for Portugal in 1908? Who played inside left for Portugal in 1908? God almighty! Inside left? Not altogether sure. Can you give me a clue? Was it a worm? No. Then I'm completely stuck. All I really know about is worms. Could I ask you about worms? Ah, now you're talking. That's much more like it. The football question rather confused me. Fire ahead. What, Sir Arthur, can we learn from the worm? Well, I've been studying the worm for thirty odd years. Thirty very odd years indeed. And I think the main thing I've learned about worms is that they are very uncommunicative, self-effacing creatures. Is it in fact possible for a worm to communicate? Let me put it this way. In all my many years of intensive study of the worm, I've never known a worm to speak to me. I don't know why. Perhaps it's something I've said, or possibly something I've left unsaid. But can they hear? Oh, yes. But don't feel inhibited. My worms have seen it all. They are unshockable. Feel free to say anything. What led you into this somewhat specialised field of wormology? I think it was my father who was responsible both for me and my interest in worms. He, in fact, was the discoverer of the world's longest worm. How long was that? Approximately 3,000 miles. He came across it in the Andes and spent five years tracing it back to its source in the Azores. There has been some doubt expressed about the authenticity of this claim. Wasn't it Professor Hans Gauleiter who suggested that your father had sighted the head of one worm in the Andes and the tail of another worm in the Azores? Gauleiter was, of course, prejudiced against my father, who was, at the time, romantically involved with Frau Gauleiter, the professor's wife. She shared my father's interest in enormous worms. I wonder if I could have a look at some of the worms you have here in captivity. I very much doubt it. You see, worms spend most of their life underground. I've got a couple in here, but they haven't been out for years. If you like, we could sit down here with a thermos and some sandwiches, but it might be years before we sighted one. But I believe you have some slides of worms in action. No. I have some slides of worms in Acton, where I do most of my research. These are characteristic studies of the varying moods of worms in North London. Here we see a worm in repose, and one can see from this study why the worm has inspired the artist throughout the ages. There is certainly a kind of classical simplicity about the line. A tremendously relaxed quality. But in startling contrast, let me show you another slide of the worm's nature. This is an enraged worm, under conditions of great stress. There seems to be no real difference in its expression. How do you know it was under stress? I was shouting at it saying, you stupid worm, move along there, worm, and other inflammatory phrases. But as you've noticed, the worm keeps its feelings well under control. In this respect, they are superior to the human race. How do worms reproduce? I mean, worms aren't in the habit of having a great deal to eat and drink, staggering upstairs, getting into bed, taking off all their clothes and muttering, I love you, and... Was it all right for you, darling? 
the worm has a more earthy approach. How do they go about it? Slowly but surely. I don't know whether you've ever been underground for any length of time, but take it from me, it's dark, damp, and visibility is nil. Not an ideal setting for romance. Just let me show you a male and a female worm in a prenuptial mating display. How do you tell the difference between the male and the female? Well, men wear trousers, whereas women have long hair and things out here. I meant in worms. Well, the answer is you can't, and nor can they. It's rather a hit or miss affair. The worm tunnels along, hoping he'll hit a miss, and if he doesn't, it's apologies all round, and the worm turns in considerable embarrassment. Here is a worm on the turn. Notice the slight blush. It must also be difficult to distinguish one end of the worm from the other. It is a bit of a toss-up. Heads or tails, there's nothing in it. And this leads to the worm's worst dilemma. Trapped in a narrow tunnel of its own making, approached on either side by two rampant worms in a state of sexual arousal. What does the worm do in these circumstances? Either the worm decides to face the music and take the consequences, or else, as is more usual, it makes a suicidal leap for the surface, where, of course, it's a sitting duck for any bird. May I ask what your plans are for the future? Well, I've written a book. Helga, the Worm Cub. I've got 4,000 copies in the conservatory. It's the story of a kindly old man who finds a wounded worm and nurses it back to health. It would make a terrific film. I saw myself as the man, and either Virginia McKenna or Bridget Bardo as my wife. Bardo in particular looks as if she could have a soft spot for a worm. Has there been any interest in the subject? Not from the major companies. I think it may be more of an underground project. I've sent off some slow motion footage of worms asleep to Andy Warhol and I think it might trigger him off. Good luck with the film, Sir Arthur. It's called Helga the Worm, not Sir Arthur. By the way, there's just one thing for a sort of exciting finish to the programme. Would you like to see one of my worms leap through a flaming hoop? Yes, indeed I would. So would I. But they won't. Damn things don't even try. What a terrible disappointment. And that's all we have time for, though I'm sure we could go on talking about this fascinating subject all night. No, we couldn't. You've sucked me dry. I've nothing else to say. Well, anyway, thank you, Sir Arthur. <laughs>